we started with object oriented programming in C++. We saw what are classes, so how do you create objects, how do you write classes, how do you create objects in C++. And then we saw inheritance and polymorphism, virtual functions, pure virtual functions and all those things. And you would have got a very good idea about those things if you had completed uh, assignment 3. Now in today's class we are going to study one more like really cool feature of C++. It's called operator overloading. And I'm not trying to. I'm not going to try to explain what operator overloading is. Let's start. I will uh, explain that when the need arises. Okay. So what we are going to do now is let's see. Uh, we just create a new class. I'm just creating a new C++ class, and the class that we're going to create is a complex number. This is the a complex number is in the form of a plus i b, and a is the real part and b is the imaginary part. I hope. Most of you have come across this sometime in your high school. And we are going to create a uh, class for the complex number.
So we just uh, created a print method now to print the complex number with the real part plus uh, the imaginary part multiplied by i. So the format will be when we just try to. Now we have not written the print statement here, so nothing will be printed. And so now let's print the complex number C1. C1 dot uh, print. Okay, in a similar way we can print the complex number C2, C2 dot print. And let's just check this. You can see this, the complex number C1 has been printed like 0 plus 0 i, and the complex number C2 has been printed as 1 plus 2 i. Okay, this is the real part, this is the imaginary part. Now, in Java, when you, if you had created a class like this, like a complex number, how will you add two complex numbers? If you want to add two complex numbers, what will we do? Yeah, we will add the real and the imaginary parts together separately and how will we achieve that? How will we do that? Like we should have a member function, right? We should have a mem like a member function in the class which says add. So it will be very sim similar to this. So in, in the complex class, okay, in the complex class you will have a member function called add we have a member function called add, which takes in what should be the input to this add. Uh, it should be another complex number, let's say complex uh, right hand side, just on the right hand side of the addition, and or you can just say other, anything is fine, okay, other, another complex number that you want to add, and then the return type of this particular method would be complex, okay, because it's going to return a complex number. This is how we will do this in Java, and we can even do this in C++. Okay, and this returns a complex number. And now, so just to make sure, does everyone understand what we just did here? It is the member function that we are writing. Okay, and so all member functions will be called on the object. So, for example, if you want to add C1 and C2, we will say C1 dot add of C2. Okay, so. In that particular case, this other is nothing but C2. Okay, in main, if you have code like uh, let's say complex C3 is equal to C1 dot add of C2. Okay, so now C1 dot add of C2. C2 is the other complex number that goes inside this here. Okay, the, the argument, and this returns a complex number. And in main, we are collecting the complex number in uh, another complex number called C3. Okay, so to implement this, let's just implement this now. What will we do? So here we will create a temporary complex number. Okay, like a temporary variable to store the result. And let's say complex uh, sum, and we'll just say sum dot real is equal to. Uh, so here. We can access the others real and imaginary using the other dot real and other dot imaginary. How will you access the C1's real and imaginary or on whichever object we are actually calling this method? How will we access that? So we are calling C1 dot um, add of C2, right? C2 is other and we can access the real and imaginary part of C2 using like other dot real, other dot imaginary. But how should I access the real and imaginary part of the receiving object? The receiving object in this case is just C1 on which we are calling this method. How can we access that? Anyone? Use this. This. Very good. So you can use this or in this case we can directly access this. Since this is again a member method, we can directly access the real part here. We are already in that particular object, so it is just say real, you can just say real plus other dot real. This is also valid code because this real now will just refer to the private data member real of this object, okay? Or yeah, you can say, you can even say this dot real. And since this is a pointer, okay, we are not called pointers, but still, yeah, this is a pointer, so you can't just use that dot notation, we will use the arrow notation, okay? If you want to do this, yeah. And then in a similar way, you will say sums imaginary part is equal to this dot uh, imaginary plus other plus other dot imaginary, okay. And then you should return the uh, 
uh, like the uh, yeah, addition of these two complex numbers from the sum which will go there, okay? So now when you go to main, you have added these two complex numbers using this add method and now let's see, let's just print this thing, okay? When you just print this thing, I think it is added but let's change this C1 to something else so that we can be sure, okay? Let's say this is 2 comma 5. So can you see this? This is C1, 2 plus 5i, C2 is 1 plus 2y and the C3 is 3 plus 7i, okay? Does everyone, uh, does everyone able to understand this? Because still now we have not did, did anything fancy, we have just added a member function called add. Whatever we did here is also doable in Java, okay? And so I assume that you already know this. Now, the what is the fancy stuff or the cool stuff that we can do in C++ is, if you just look at this line number 13, saying something like C1 is actually a complex number, right? C1 dot add of C2 is not as intuitive as saying, okay, it's not as intuitive or not, yeah, I'm just commenting this out, it's not as intuitive as saying complex C3 is equal to C1 plus C2. So this is more clear, this is like more clear than the other one. We are just saying these two are complex numbers, can we just add these two complex numbers, okay? Can someone tell me, is this possible in Java? Can we do something like this in Java, C1 plus C2? It's not at all possible, okay? Because Java lacks operator overloading, okay? Whether you mean Java does not have the feature of operator overloading, so you cannot add two objects because complex is an object of a class that you just created, so you cannot just add two complex numbers like this using an addition operator. It is not defined. Even in C++, at this time, with whatever code that we have written, it is not possible to add two user defined objects, okay? So it is, there is some red line here, it says like binary operator plus can't be applied to the expression of type complex and complex. You cannot add these two things. So now what we are going to do to make this work is go back, go back here, okay? I am just going to copy this whole thing as it is, okay? Or maybe let first I will just see. This is how we are going to like uh, overload the addition operator. Till now we have seen like we can overload like functions. But fun what is function overloading? A function can have the same name, but it can take different types of parameters. And based on the type of the parameters that you call the function, that particular version of the function will be called. Okay. In this particular case, usually addition has a default meaning. Okay. In addition, we can add two integers or we can add two doubles. Okay. But in this case, we are saying we are going to add two complex numbers. For that, we being the creators of this complex numbers class should define what does addition mean with respect to complex numbers. And this process of defining what does a particular operator, for example, in this case addition, what does addition mean with respect to my class, which I am writing right now, which is a complex number, this process is called operator overloading. We are actually overloading an operator. Okay. And the operator that we are overloading right now is the addition operator. And the syntax for that is just, you just say operator, okay? Just say operator and the addition is the operator that we are overloading now. So now this operator plus, okay, operator is a keyword in C++ which says that we are going to overload the addition operator for this class. This operator plus is just the name of the function. It's just the name of a function in this case, okay? So here before here we should actually do it uh, in the HPP file, okay? The HPP file very similar to add, I'm going to write operator plus, so I'm going to overload addition operator and in a similar way this addition operator has two things, okay? One is the object that it is being called on and the other. So here for other I'm just going to say this is the object that is on the right hand side of the plus sign, that is on the right hand side of the addition, okay? And so now again operator plus is just the name of the like a function but you cannot like name it anyhow you want. You cannot just say add plus or anything like that. Operator is a keyword and followed by what is the operator that you are overloading and then you are passing in another uh, what to say uh, yeah, another complex number there and this is going to return a complex number. Okay. You see here, we just replace the word add with operator plus. Okay. We just replace the word uh, the function name add with operator plus, nothing else. And now if you want to like generate definition for this function, again it says yeah, complex operator plus, it takes in one more complex number. 
and now what should we do here inside the code can just be the exact same code as addition okay so i'm just copying the code and pasting it here we don't have the so now it's rhs just changing this to rhs okay okay the code is exactly the same as we have in add but here we have a special function called operator plus which means that we are overloading the addition operator for the complex number class and now based on this because we have defined this particular function we are actually overloaded the addition operator and now see here that red color line just went off did you notice that so now this is no more an error because we have like clearly defined what this addition with respect to complex numbers with my complex number class so now i can easily add two complex numbers with this particular syntax just to be clear operator overloading is just a syntactic sugar in c++ okay whatever you do with operator overloading you can even do without oper operator overloading by using just the member functions but i will show you till now we have been using operator overloading right from the first class okay and we will show you some examples of where what are the different instances that we are using that and so now let's see if this c3 again produces the same result as previously you see that now the code c3 is equal to c1 plus c2 actually works we have the 3 plus 7 i is that cool we can add two objects now using the addition operator in c++ any questions about this because this is the basics of operator overloading but there are so many details i can even stop operator overloading right here and we can proceed to other topics but the we could even like uh, cover operator overloading overloading for like four to five lectures and that is how much details are there inside operator overloading so yeah, any questions about operator overloading so if you don't understand this then anything after this point would not make sense yeah would be bad practice to call your method yeah, you can do that, but whenever you are going to... So the question was, can we call the add method from within the operator plus, okay? Within the operator plus method, we can do that, okay? But if you think about it, whenever you are defining operator plus, that same class will not even provide add method for you. So usually in our complex class, okay, I just came, I just started with the add method just to show you how this tra like transitions to this operator plus, but usually you will not even have this add method. This will not even be present there. So maybe not even be there in the class okay so it will only be operator plus <coughs> so this is right hand side so if you have a, so if you have this uh, addition let's say c3 is equal to c1 plus c2 right okay in this addition this operator is here right now and we have c2 here okay this c2 is the right hand side of this addition and the c1 is the left hand side and how this gets converted internally is actually okay this just convert, gets converted to c3 is equal to c1 this plus the plus sign here just gets converted to c1 dot operator plus the name of the function is just replaced with c2 you see here this is exactly saying c1 dot add of c2 this is how it gets converted internally if you understand this, this is the basics of understanding operator overloading. And the compiler does this for you. And so since the compiler does this for you, you need not worry about calling it as like the operate, like in this syntax. You can just use this syntax and it just gets converted. The addition operator just gets converted like this. So to, if you want to like see like am I talking the truth here or we can even what we can do here is to verify this, okay? We can go to uh, the complex, okay, and we can even comment out this line. We can maybe copy this line and then comment out this line, and we can even say complex c1 dot operator plus of c2. Okay, this is how it will actually get converted to, and now we are actually using the converted form itself directly in our code to see if this also produces the same result. Running this, do you see this here? 
the same, this is 3 plus 7i, it actually adds it. This is who? This is how operator overloading works in C++. And you cannot, like what to say, overload some operator that does not even have any meaning. So for example, addition has a meaning, okay? Subtraction has a meaning. You cannot just say I'm going to overload the pound sign operator because there is no, you cannot like define something on that, okay? And even if, you, for fun, if you just do something like, okay, I'm saying that I'm overloading this addition operator, but internally, okay, in the actual class, because the entire power is with you, here you can, by mistake or like just for fun, if you just change this to a negative sign, okay, whatever it does to be the negative sign, then this is like completely violates the rule where if you go and run this, people, okay, don't forget, forget about this, just take this code. Someone will try to add your to, to complex numbers, but the result that they will be getting is just the subtraction of the two complex numbers, the difference, okay? And they will be like completely surprised. Just think about it. The same operator overloading is actually used in strings, okay? When we add two strings, S1 plus S2 string concatenation happens, right? That is just operator overloading there. Even in Java, you can add two strings using operator overloading, but they use operator overloading for, like what to say, the classes that, that they use in the library and they provide to us, but in Java, they just don't give the programmers the power to define operators to define the own operators in the classes, but C++ gives you that power, okay? So string, adding two strings is exactly, just think if, when we are trying to add two strings, if the implementer of the string class made some mistakes there and he's like just completely messed up the string addition, instead of concatenating two strings, he just like, uh, what to say, returns you the common elements in the two strings. Wouldn't we be surprised with that? That's the exact thing that will happen to the users of your class if you did something like this, okay? So whenever you, First, the first rule is operating overloading is like don't use operator overloading, okay? <laughs> Seriously, the first rule with operator overloading is don't use operator overloading unless you are pretty sure, okay, I know I have studied complex numbers so well and I have also <coughs> seen people use complex numbers, they will definitely add to complex numbers. And in that particular time, if I provide this addition operator, then I will, that then that will make my users life easy when they are writing code. Only in those scenarios, please provide, please use operator overloading. What other scenarios can you think of? Just think about if we had used operator overloading for our student class, okay? What does it even mean to add two students? Are we like marrying them or something like that? <laughs> so, we should like think about all these things to make sure that, okay, uh, what does it even mean? Because operator overloading wouldn't make any sense with student class, okay? And in the same way, here it makes total sense because this is how people deal with complex numbers in the real world and we are giving them uh, syntax that is very close to however they deal with complex numbers in the real world, okay? And what other scenarios can you think about where we can use uh, operator overloading? Any other classes that you may create? Yeah? Like rational numbers? Rational numbers, very good. Rational numbers is a very good uh, place where you can actually use complex, sorry, the operator overloading. Any other examples? Matrices. If you think about matrices, if you create a class for a matrix, think about like how you work with the, what to say, MATLAB and something like that. It is just like they have all these things, right? So, yeah. Would you want to use this to compare objects? To compare objects? Yes. Like the, you can. So the question was, can we just use this to compare objects? That's a very good question because you can overload the less than operator, less than equals, greater than, greater than equals, or equality, all of these things to compare objects. And that is exactly how string comparison works in C++. You can just compare two strings saying if S1 is double equals X, S2, right? They have just overloaded the double equals operator for the string objects. Yeah? Uh, what about like the That's a very good question. So what happens in this particular case, okay, if we actually add one more complex number here, okay? Let's just add, let's say, let's add a C4, okay? And what happens if we add C4 or so here? Let's see if it works. I 
little bit subtracting actually. <laughs> Associativity, the commutate, the commutativity, and what say, and all those properties will apply as well as it applies to addition, normal addition. So here, when you do this, it says like, okay, addition is usually from left to right. If you don't have any parentheses, it happens in the same way. The same thing, the same line just gets converted to the same line just gets converted to if you do it like in this operator overloaded way. Okay, C1 dot operator plus I. So let's assume for clarity, let's have a brace here, okay? Let's have a brace here. So this is gets converted to C1 dot operator plus of C2 dot operator plus of C4. This makes sense. This is how this just gets converted to this line of code. Uh, adding three complex numbers just gets converted like this. Just adding, uh, calling the addition method of the operator plus function multiple times based on the associativity of like which side does it associate with. Yeah, so good question. Yeah. And then, uh, so yeah, so and whenever if you, if you are providing uh, addition operator in your class, okay, then users who are actually using it, okay, now they will start using this as just integers, right? They can easily add numbers and stuff like that. But if you, and when a user does this, and after some time, if a user wants to do some statement like this, okay, uh, I just want to add C1 and C2 and just store the result in C1. Okay, this is completely allowed in integers, right? This is just a compound assignment operator. Here we are just saying C1 equals C1 plus C2. So if you overloaded the addition operator, then your users of your class will automatically expect that this will be possible. But in our case, now we have not overloaded the plus equals operator. This is a separate operator. In that case, uh, the C++ compiler is not so intelligent to understand, okay, you have overloaded the addition operator, so I can do this for you. It will not do that for you, okay? We have to do that explicitly again. If you want this operator, the plus equals to work, then all you have to do is go back again, just in a simpler way, create a plus equals. <coughs> okay, have a right hand side, and then it also returns a complex number. Let's generate a definition for this. But now just think about this, okay? We are calling. So how does that get converted to? Because this is like very really important in understanding what are, whatever we are going to do here. So the code that we just wrote is like C1 plus equals C2, okay? And this will get converted to C1 dot operator plus equals of C2, okay? This is how this will get converted to. And what we are doing here, this whole thing now will return the addition of will return the addition of C1 plus C2, and but we want to store this result inside the object C1. Is that correct? <coughs> is this what? Isn't this what we are trying to do here? Just adding C1 and C2 and storing the result in C1. And in that particular case, in this particular case, C1 dot operator plus of C2, C1 is the this object. This on which this is a receiving object, C1 is a receiving object on which the method is being called, okay? And so we have to actually change the this object here, okay? And to change the this, so I go back here. So now, already we have overloaded the uh, plus operator, okay? Already we have overloaded the addition operator. And so here, what we can do is we can just say, yeah, we can just create a left hand side and this left hand side is nothing but so 
this is a pointer, okay, very similar, think of it as iterator, IT, that, that we used to like traverse in a, what is a vector or something like that. This is a pointer to the object, the current object that it is being called, and actually get the object. When you want to actually get an integer or something like that, using inside iterator, in C out, you will say star, which is the dereference operator, to go from the iterator to the actual object, right? In a similar way, from this pointer, this, to go to the actual object, you just say star this. Star this will give you the actual object that <coughs> this function is being called on, okay? And then what we are going to do here is we are actually going to modify the current object itself because C1 plus C2 should be assigned in C1, right? So you can think LHS is C1, okay? And so we are going to modify the current object itself. We are going to say this is equal to left hand side plus right hand side. That's it. The left hand side is a complex number, okay? It's the current complex number C1. Right hand side is the complex number on the other side of the plus equals operator. We are just adding those two complex numbers and then we are modifying the current object which in this case is again just C1. Okay? And this line is not even needed. This was just for explanations. This line is not even needed. If you understand whatever is going on here, then all you have to do here is just say I'm taking the current object C1 star, this just gets converted to C1, okay, C1 plus C2. But we already defined how to do this addition and so the operator overloaded method here will be called on this particular thing. And since we know how to add two complex numbers, we are just adding two complex numbers and then assigning the result in the same complex number, which is C1 again. And then since this needs to return a complex number again, we are just going to say return Star this. Can someone say why are we even returning something? Because in main, this we just told this gets converted to C1 dot operator plus equals C2. We are not even capturing the return value in anything. Then why are we returning a complex number in this case? Anyone? It's also, sorry, the answer was like assignment in C++ actually returns something. Here in this case, what? You, we are only thinking of this particular scenario, but a user who has used the assignment equals the compound assignment operator can also use your code like C3 is equals, is this correct? This, this is also a valid statement because it just says on the right hand side and just making like C1 equals the sum of C1 plus C2 and that particular sum I'm just assigning it to C3, okay? This is also a valid statement. If you don't give a complex return type in this operator plus equals, but just do give it as a void, this particular statement will not execute. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. It's the, it's the reason that we have the return value is because our operator that we overloaded contained an assignment statement. Uh, no, the return value is this operator that we are overloading right now, okay, can be on the right hand side of an assignment. In a similar way, like C3 equals our operator overloading on the right hand side. And so that should return a value to C3 in this case. So this will just get converted to, okay, this same line will just get converted to C3 equals C1 dot operator plus equals of C2. Okay? And on the second right side, now this whole thing, we are defining this, right? In this thing, we are saying like now this returns a complex number, and this complex number is nothing but the value of star this, which is C1 in this case. So here, that will be taken in C3. That is the reason why this is What if you wanted to multiply an integer and a complex number? Yeah, that's a very good question. We will be like, uh, we will just do that next year. The question was, why? what would we do if you want to just multiply an integer with a complex number? It's a very good, because people usually do that, right? We have like C, you can just say 2 times C. Both the real part and the imaginary part will be multiplied the same scalar times, right? So to do something like that, let's see what we can do. Okay, so uh, till this, okay, I will just comment this out. Till this, this is everything clear? And we can try to actually uh, see after this. After this, let's try to print C1 and C, okay? Dot print. 
C here. C1 now has a value of C1 plus C2, 3 plus 7 pi. You see that? So our operator plus equals actually works now. Okay? And for the question like how do we actually do something like a scalar multiplied by a complex number? How can you overload that particular operator? It's a very good question. Let's just try doing that, okay? If we say like okay, I'm going to define operator, I'm just going to copy this, okay? Operator plus or uh, multiplication, I'm going to overload a multiplication operator, and this is what is going to happen. And and let's say I'm going to just have like integers now, like scalar, okay? Will this work? <coughs> We have not defined it yet, but I'm just asking: Will this particular uh, operator multiplication work for a multiplication of a scalar with a complex number? Yes or no? Yes, it will work. Okay, only if the order that you are calling this multiplication is the complex number comes first, multiplied by the scalar. Does it make sense? This will work only if the complex number comes first, multiplied by the scalar. But if you just do something like this, that's not good because the users will assume if they are multiplying using complex numbers as ordinary numbers, then they have to do both the ways, right? 2 multiplied by the complex number or complex number multiplied by 2 or something like this. So to provide them both those what to say, ways, what we should do is this particular function okay, should take in, okay, uh, I'm just going to have it as outside the class, okay? Outside this class, now I'm going to just make a free function. The functions that don't belong to the class but are within the same file are called free functions. Here I'm saying I'm going to write a free function which takes in a scalar as the first argument and a complex number, let's say right hand side as the second argument. Okay? This is one version of the function. And I also I have to define another version of the same multiplication function with the complex number as the first argument and the scalar is the second argument that uh, this is like the yeah, operator function overloading of operators yeah that's what exactly is happening here we have the same function name operator star we are actually defining two ways that we can call the multiplication operator when a complex number and a scalar is multiplied and this is how you do that but this is not inside that particular uh, class and so you don't even have the this parameter okay it is it will not be called on any object it is a free function let's see what that means now if I want to define these functions all I have to do is okay uh, so in, in here okay <coughs> now uh, we know that if you want to like actually do something like this you have to let's say uh, create a complex Say uh, result, okay. Result dot uh, real is equal to RHS dot real scalar multiplied <coughs> scalar times RHS dot real, and in a similar way, the result dot imaginary equals scalar times. RHS dot imaginary. Okay, we're just multiplying this real part, imaginary part, and we are just going to return the result. Okay, and then what we are going to do here is, yeah, we can actually have the same code here, but instead of this, uh, yeah, actually this would be LHS in this case. Okay. In this case, this is going to be LHS because this will be on the left hand side of the operator. But remember, these are free functions, so we don't even call this on any complex object. Okay? What does that mean? We have it here, we have it, we have it like this. Okay? Now let's let's just explain what does that mean. Okay, uh, calling an operator like this means you will just call if you are saying C3 is equal to 2 times C1. Okay, if this is being called, then how this will get converted to is C3 equals operator asterisk 2 comma C1. This is how this will get converted to because this is a free function, but 
it is not called on any object, we are just calling the function directly. Does this make sense? Just calling the function directly, but you are just providing a scalar and the complex number to it. If you are given like c1 times 2, then the first argument would be c1 and the second argument would be c2 in this case. But there is an issue here. Uh, let's try running this, okay. Yeah, see here, what? Uh, okay. I'm just saying c1 uh, or c3 equals uh, c1 times 2. Okay, then just print c3. Or anything, or 2 times c1. So if it is like this, then we have something like this, okay. Now when you try to run this code, it says real is a private member of complex. See here, we don't have any getters or setters for complex and we are having some free functions outside the class here, okay. We are having some free functions outside the class, but these free functions are actually trying to access the private variables of complex, which is the real and imaginary directly, okay. which. This is not possible because real and imaginary are private variables inside the complex class and only the member functions are allowed to access it. In this case, these free functions that are outside the complex class cannot access those things directly, okay? And a workaround for allowing these free functions, okay, to access some things like this directly is you make these functions, okay, you make these functions, move them from being just free functions to be friends, to be friends with the class, okay. <laughs> We're saying like, okay, now these functions are going to be friend functions, friends of this particular complex class. So the friends have the, what to say, right to access the private, private members of this particular class. So how do we make these things friends? You just take this declaration, put it inside, just add a friend keyword at the beginning. Just say that these two functions are actually friends of the complex number class. So they have the, they can access the private members of these class directly. But if you, if you already had getters and setters for this defined, you need not even make them friends. You can just have them as free functions and use those getters and setters to get and set the real numbers. Okay, the real and imaginary part of the complex number. And once you make them friend, When you run this, so what did we do? So we just see this is now C3, okay? So C1 is just this one because we just made something here. Uh, C1 is 3 plus 7i. Now if you see here, we have multiplied with the scalar. You see this 6 plus 14i. Okay, and even if you reverse this thing, it should work because we have defined both the things C1 multiplied by 2. See this? How it works? And this is how you overload multiplication operator with like something else, like uh, like a scalar number and something like that. Now, any questions about this about operator overloading? So there are two ways to actually overload operators: one as member functions and one as free functions. And even for the free functions, you can actually just use the getters and setters to set those uh, private, like real and imaginary part, but if you don't have getters and setters in the class, you can actually make it as a friend function and allow it access. So even though the main thing here is even though these functions now, okay, it's so confusing here because even though these two functions are inside the class, they are not member functions, okay. They are not member functions of that particular class. They are still free functions, but they are just friends of that particular class. They are free functions. By free functions, you cannot call them on some particular object. By that I mean, okay, I will just show you the last thing. So here, this particular line of code will get converted to C3 equals not C1 dot something, but it will just be operator star of C1 comma 2. This is how this code gets converted to. Do you understand this? And so if you just comment this out and let's see to check if this works. Yeah, the same result. It's plus 49. And this is how this works. And just one fun thing, this particular operator, okay, the operator in the print that we have here, this operator in C programming is actually a left shift operator, okay. It's a left shift operator. How does this even print something to the console? 
this particular line of code has actually operated overloading there. They have overloaded the left shift operator on the output stream, okay? Output stream STD C out is the output stream. So on the output stream, they have overloaded the, what to say, the left shift. So you need not worry about what that left shift is if you don't know that. It's just like in a bit, uh, in a bike, you can just shift the bits like n number of positions, something like that. So in this particular case, they have just used overloaded the left shift operator to do, to be like, uh, to print something. In the same way, we can also, for our complex class, if we overload the left shift operator to be a printing operator, what we can just do here is just instead of calling the print, we can easily say std c out c1 or c2 or c3, anything like that. If you had overloaded, now if we write operator overloading for complex number on this left shift operator, then this line is a valid line. Now right now we don't have it and so now this is not a valid line. But if we have, if we can overload it, this is a valid line of code. You can just print a complex number as you are printing integer. And this is how, like, so this operator is overloaded for strings and that's why you can directly print <coughs> strings there, even though string is an object. Okay, that's so many things to discuss about oper operator overloading. Maybe I can I will post the code for how to do this. Okay, and I think you will also learn a lot from the assignment that is going to come, which is going to be like operator overloading on matrices. Okay, on matrices. Yeah, if you have any questions, please feel free to come and talk with me after the class now, or else I'll see you guys next week. Thank you.